Hello. I hope everybody's doing good today. Um, I'm going to make a conscious effort not to say um as much this video as I did in the first video. I'm already failing, but that's okay. So today I'm wanting to talk about uh, stars without number, which I had mentioned in the intro, I guess, that uh, it's going to be my primary topic for the channel. And um, so yeah, I guess to get started, what we're going to try and do, I'm going to try and talk about Stars Without Number just itself. There's, I don't, I don't know that there's, actually, I believe it was Questing Beast that first put me on to Stars Without Number. I'd never heard of it before. Uh, I had seen, the only other Stars, the only other, I guess, space RPG I, I had seen was Starfinder. Uh, because I originally started playing in Pathfinder. And Starfinder seemed kind of neat. But uh, I think I may even have Starfinder on Humble Bundle. But anyhow, whenever Questing Beast was talking about Stars Without Number. Uh, and I know that he's got a, a lot of different stuff that he talks about with the OSR scene and stuff like that. And he really recommended it. And I was like, man, that sounds, that sounds really, really cool. So, I, yeah, I just went out and jumped in with both feet and went out and bought the Deluxe Edition uh, hard hardcover. Uh, also, while I was doing it, I bought uh, Worlds Without Number hardcover as well. It was on, I believe it was on sale on Drive-Thru RPG. It was just for Christmas. Uh, and so I was like, man, I might not get another ch chance at this. Even though you can get, you can get all the rules essentially... <sighs> on on drive through rpg for free totally free but it's just it's such a good game that and and the book itself is just so well done it's 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 really awesome uh, i definitely would recommend it so probably you can you can get a better in-depth feel probably from uh mr questing beast and I'm, there's probably some other guys that can do a better job of it than me, but uh, I, I would just maybe give you some of my some of my thoughts on the game Stars Without Number. Uh, the first is that setting up the characters is uh, pretty straightforward. It seems as if uh, after our first few inter our first few games that we've played together with my friends that. The psionics seem to be a bit overpowered. I could be wrong, uh, so I'm actually I'm actively trying to plan for ways that my players who are psionics are going to get a little bit nerfed. So I'm going to do things a little bit different, and I'll probably talk about that a little bit whenever I start talking about specifically about my game. But uh, it's uh, the, the the skill checks in the game are done with a two d six plus a skill modifier plus an attribute modifier and i've played the only other games that i've played are pathfinder 1 and uh, dungeons and dragons 5e so this type of skill system is totally foreign to me but my initial reaction is i love it i think it's so neat it gives your players it gives them it forces them to be get creative Right, so like what I'll do is I'll say, hey, you know, you're presented with this issue that's ahead of you. So maybe, uh, maybe if there's a, a big, maybe there's a big door um, that is uh, maybe cocked sideways and it's off the runners. And I'm talking about like a big blast door and, uh, and your players need to get by, but they can't squeeze by. Right, so. <clears throat> it could be that they use intelligence and uh, maybe a uh, fix to try and see if they can maybe get the door back into the runners. Uh, they might use uh, exert and strength to try and uh, maybe just force the, the door back into the runners. There's all these different ways that you can, I guess, change... And use your character's specific abilities to to your advantage. And 
that's the that's the thing I really like about the game is that the game it, it encourages your players to not just think about what the rules are and what you know what the the book says that you should do that you're not going to get that a lot and it's it's going to force your players to approach different things um, from a thoughtful perspective and I really really like that uh, the 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 characters that, that you create as well. Uh, you're, it asks you for a background, and from the background, you also that that kind of helps to, I guess, generate your base character, and then from that, you're going to pick your character class. And the the base game comes with four character classes, which is the adventurer, the warrior, the psychic, and the expert. And so the adventure is kind of mixed between the other three: expert, psychic, and warrior. Um, but there's so many neat little, uh, I guess you would call them, mixtures that you could do. That for me, I was I told my my players that I want to do just the four. So since I bought the full game, uh, the hard co cover copper copy. Blah, 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 do you actually get a few other ones? Uh, and I'm not going to really cover that with this video. I might do that at a, maybe a, another another time. But um, with with what we were looking at, and the, just really the broad spectrum of of characters that you can create just from the four core classes, yeah, we decided that this was plenty for us. Uh, from that, you get to choose a focus. This helps you kind of like funnel your character down the path that you want him to take, him or her. And there's there's tons of different options there. I believe that the 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 book kind of also allows, like, kinda maybe even encourages you to create your own subclasses, maybe create your own foci, uh, create your own backgrounds. There's all kinds of different neat stuff. And and also, as I mentioned before in my previous video, Kevin Crawford does a great job of. If you have questions, just go to the subreddit. And yeah, just ask ask on the subreddit, and more than likely Kevin Crawford himself will respond. It's really awesome, Kevin. He seems I, I I can't like it to me. It's unfathomable why or how how much customer service <laughs> you could call it customer service. How much how good the customer service is uh, from Kevin Crawford, especially because probably a lot of these guys maybe even didn't pay for it, right? And and he's act he, he tries his best to to answer the questions, and they're not like short quips, like one or two sentences. Like he he'll answer in in paragraphs. It's amazing to me. Uh, I I don't know. I guess I'm a I guess maybe I'm a Kimono fanboy. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but anyhow, uh, there's so after the character creation, you're there's there's different weapon types. Uh, there's and and I actually expanded on the weapon types. I took quite a bit of time and and tried to add some more flavor. Uh, for example, there's I don't I don't I think there's a base shotgun maybe, but I added like a sawed off shotgun that really amplified damage whenever you're really close, and then it has a really quick fall off to where if you do land a hit, if you're like not basically standing on right on top of the enemy. Then you're not going to do much damage. I had I added another uh, weapon that was a uh, it was basically a railgun sniper rifle where for one round the player has to or the NPC has to stay completely mobile, taking aim and essentially charging up the magnets in the railgun, and then the next round he actually takes the shot. So and the damage is is astronomical. But I, I like the idea of a high-risk, high-reward type of weapon, uh, which is kind of what you see with both the sawed-off shotgun and uh, that kind of a sniper rifle. So that was kind of... Uh, the point being is that the game leaves a lot of open to interpretation. It leaves you a lot of options for creating your own weapons, things like that. And I definitely would encourage you to do that, for sure. Because, I mean, it... Uh, uh, I guess a lot of the options that the, the base game gives you are very vague. There's not an enormous number of options. And and I, I kind of like that, to be honest, because I guess that's one of the good things that, that is with 5e is that there's so much content out there that if you just 
on a whim or you're like, oh, you know, I really need a, a monster that is undead and in this level range. And then it, you can easily search and find a pretty good monster for that and a pretty balanced monster even. But with this game, uh, I actually ended up, there's not a whole lot of options for monsters that you are play that you can put in it. The Xeno Bestiary is, is pretty shallow. So for instance, the, for the humanoids, it looks like there's about, yeah, about 12 maybe options. And they're, they're more like descriptions of types of humanoids than anything. But, uh, you can kind of, for the humanoids, that's probably enough for the, for the humanoids. But for the beasts, it's it's extremely, extremely vague. So all the beasts in the game, of all the beasts in the game, again, they he bases it off of the description. Uh, so for instance, a, a large aggressive prey animal. Uh, and from that, you would you would create your creature, right? And so I, I took, I think I took like a whole, a few hours one Saturday. And created my own bestiary list and i'll probably eventually share that with you guys if you're interested for me it was fun to create my own so uh, if for no other reason maybe i can share with you guys and just so that you can kind of maybe get a good idea about how to do your own but i, I really like the fact that he kept it so vague by the way I, i'm not i'm not being critical of of that at first i was kind of like man that kind of sucks you know how how am I going to figure out what I'm supposed to use and everything? And the point, what I basically what I told my players was this: is that uh, there there's not there's not a nice neat way or a nice neat recommendation from the game of what you at level one should be facing or you at level three should be facing. There is no such thing as that. Um, th and so the way that I basically explained it to my players was because I guess meta wise, I don't know how to play this game. I don't know how to run this game. Uh, but you as the players should make this assumption and it'll make it more, uh, I guess, fun for you whenever you're playing is you are exploring a galaxy or a universe that no one else has explored. You're going to be going places that nobody else has been doing things that nobody else has done. And there's going to be creatures that you run across that you have never seen. They could be dangerous. They might not be dangerous. You don't know. I don't know. I don't know how these creatures are going to, uh, I guess, challenge the players. And because of that, it's up to the players to really gauge whether this interaction is one that they want to stick around for or not. So I, I kind of like that uh, as opposed to in my Dungeons & Dragons 5e game that I run. I actually added a. I had it this in one encounter, and I'll talk about it eventually. Whenever I do the the game recaps that I'm going to do eventually, I had this one encounter where there was this giant octopus that was in this room, right? And some of the, my players were like, had this thing in their mind, like, okay, well, the giant octopus exists in the game. There's a. I can bring up the the rules for what the giant octopus can do and all this. And instead, the way that I played it was, I played it as basically every single uh, character that was within range has to make a, a grappling check every single every single round and they're like that, that's not in the rules well i don't give a shit <laughs> you know i mean this is this is you guys are you guys are running into things that nobody else has seen before you guys are doing things that nobody else wants to do you're getting paid to do this because everybody else is too scared to do it so you're going to run in stuff you don't understand anyhow that's a little bit of a side topic um but uh, yeah, so we, I have a few a aliens in my game, but it, it, uh, Kevin also gives sort of a, a little bit of uh, descriptions for how to handle aliens in the game. Uh, let's see here. And I know I said that I wasn't going to say uh, very much. Factions, I haven't played with factions very much, but they seem super interesting. It seems like It seems like having factions in the game, in your game, would be difficult to manage. Or, or sorry, not difficult to manage, but it would be an, an additional layer of stuff that you as the DM has to manage. And it's up to you, it's going to be up to you whether or not that, that sounds fun to you. But there, he impl he has this sort of, sort of criteria for how to have factions in the game and also how the factions interact with one another between your game sessions. 
uh, it's really it's a it's a fascinating idea. It seems super cool, but it also seems like a lot of work. So I haven't done it yet, but uh, I'm definitely going to eventually do it. Let's see here. What else has he got? He's got a, a general history uh, that he recommends for the game. I don't follow this. I follow some of the things. For example, the Scream does exist in my game. And basically what the Scream is, is it's like this metadimensional, terrible thing that has happened. And uh, it basically causes this huge problem within the the game world. And... Yeah, it's it's a, it's kind of a neat thing. It, it creates like a uh, almost like a I guess a time skip almost because everything pre scream seems to be like super advanced, and now you there you might have some advanced things, maybe you don't. It kind of adds a reason why your characters, your sorry, your players might run into some random stuff that may be Stone Age stuff. And then maybe the next session they could be dealing with stuff that's like incredibly far out into the future. You can't even fathom what they what it might be. So it creates this enormous, uh, I guess, this these this enormous possibilities within within the game, right? So um, let's see what else we got. I'm gonna try and wrap up here in just a little bit, probably. Uh, the, in general, most people seem to agree that levels 1 through 3 in Stars Without Number is extremely brutal. And after that, the players start to develop, you know, a, a skill set that makes them much more resilient. But I have my players are still only level 1 in this game. We haven't... I, I usually run a game that's very slow. I don't like for my characters to get super high uh, leveled up. I don't think it's fun. I don't like to do it myself when I'm a player. I like to have a, a low skill set and be forced to cry, try and come up with ideas about how we deal with situations. And I like for my players to do that too. But uh, yeah, right now it is it is it is pretty dangerous for my players. One one of the players is only only has three hit points, for example. And, uh, so he's, yeah, he, every single, <laughs> every single battle, he basically is like trying to find every nick and cranny that he can hide behind to still be able to get cover and still be able to deal damage. So it's kind of neat. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've just hit on a few things. I didn't want to go into too much detail because I changed quite a bit in my game that I'm playing. Not, not a whole lot, but, uh, you know, a decent amount. And so because of that, I don't know. I, I just wanted to at least, if you if you'd never heard of Stars Without Number, I just wanted to kind of give you guys an, an introduction to it, maybe, because you might you might enjoy it. So far, I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it, and like I said, if if you're interested in a game that is uh, taking place in a futuristic sci-fi setting, and you want one that is fresh and that you have easy access to the developer, I'm telling you, there's there's not a better option, really. There's not a better option. So I would I would highly recommend it. Uh, and now that I've got the introduction to the game out of the way, I definitely am going to be following up with some of my uh, introductions to my world that the players are experiencing, as well as how we handled some of our. Uh, some of our sessions and so act after action reports things like that so i'm really excited about that i hope that you guys are at least interested in that and i reckon we'll see you guys here in the next one thanks for tuning in